Good evening and welcome to week 44 of the basic course in Vedic Astrology by Shiva, Sarvamangala Institute of Vedic Astrology. Let's look at the agenda. Last class recap. Then we have seven vowel sounds in Sanskrit mapped in some way to Vedic Astrology. Then we look at the Jupiter's moon, Callisto, the last of the four Galilean moons. Jupiter overall has close to 70 moons, 70. Callisto is a bit unique. We'll see that today. Then we have the audio check. Now we have review of the fundamental questions set 10 to 18. Okay. And this will be done verbally, no zoom poll and all. Second assessment probe that is finding Astro Ninja. I had already shared it. I hope to, we, to get some good discussion out of this today. It's for the Saturn and Moon placed in the chart that shared. Then we'll do the uh, remaining birth chart reading that we were doing earlier. I hope you have the contents ready with you. I could not work on uh, making a summary of it in that uh, birth chart steps. We'll try to do it by next week. Then we have a meeting feedback followed by self-reflection and Q&A. Let's begin. Last week recap, <clears throat> so we looked at the secret seven that was seven types of pranayama map to astrology. Some sound is coming. Okay, then we had the fundamental question set 18, then Jupiter's moon, Ganymede. Then the first assessment probe, Astro Ninja number one. It was really very nice last week. Finally, the birth chart analysis. The links on the bottom right are the YouTube recording and the content link for the last week's class. Now we'll look at the Sanskrit alphabet. In specific, the sounds of vowels from the point of articulation that in our you know vocal cord system. First one, a uh, a. Uh. I am sure may some of you or many of you are familiar with this. Can someone say where is the point of articulation for the vowels a uh and a? Uh? Guttural song. Guttural, yes. The, uh, another name given in English is Velar. And in Sanskrit, Kanthya. Velar. Then next vowels, E and E. Palatal. Palatal is correct. Talavya. Then U and U. Next after yes. palatal. Labial. Labial, yes. Oshtya. Then we have this R. Cerebral. Yeah, also known as retroflex. Murdhanya. Then we have this R. It's from the um, teeth. Yes, dental. Dantya. Then A and I. This is a combination of two of the previous ones. Good. 
throat and the palate. Hmm. This is palatal velar, correct. Also palato velar. That's the way they say it. Then o and ow. Throat and lips. Yes. So this is antostya labio velar. Now, what does this mean? So let's see. First one is. guttural or velar is touching the soft palate and this is mapped to kind hearted because of the soft nature soft so kind hearted okay based on this there is a mapping to the signs zodiac signs so please keep that in mind when we uh, try to guess palatal is touching the hard palate so this is mapped to warrior to indicate hardness this is true with lips so this is mapped to diplomatic means being clever with speech retroflex this is like bending backwards oh sorry this is about yeah bending backwards to for also known as cerebral so i have mapped it to something brainy that is knowledgeable then dental is touching the front teeth upper front teeth and this is mapped to hunter because hunters may have to fight with animals that's the reason of for this mapping then palato velar so this is a combination of both hard and soft and this is mapped to yielding that means although you are doing uh, you know all the everything but still you have you are kind in uh, kind hearted so the mapping is yielding labio velar this is a combination of diplomatic and kind so i mapped it to modest and celebrity modest star i hope everyone will get these answers now first one which sign does depicts that pisces not really pisces cancer sir cancer yes cancer yeah warrior aries warrior is aries diplomatic diplomatic is it scorpio no third saturn Sign, not planet. Libra. No, no, no. I see. Diplomatic is that one. Chanakya. Which sign is it? Leo. Virgo, Virgo. Maker. Virgo. Virgo. Yes, that's Virgo. Knowledgeable. Knowledge acquirers. Who are they? Gemini. Gemini. Correct. Gemini. Then hunter. This should be. Sagittarius, yeah. Sagittarius or Sagittarius. Yielding, I already. Pisces. Yielding Pisces. Modest star. Aquarius. Yep. Aquarius is correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's go to. the fourth galilean moon of jupiter and that is called callisto now let me ask if people remember something so what is unique about this moon io can someone recall something unique about it in the whole solar system it is most active volcanically okay maximum number of volcanoes volcanic activity is going on in io <coughs> it literally has ocean of lava 
underneath the surface okay what's unique about europa anyone can recall what is it on the surface what is it why is it white why is it white no answers europa is on the surface it's all sheet of ice inside it's fully ocean okay of water that's what is the finding then what's unique about this one ganymede It's so much dust. Uh, no, no, not really. It's not dust. This is also after ice. It's like also icy, but less dense than Europa. But the unique thing is, this is bigger than Mercury in size. It's the biggest moon in the solar system. Okay. And the unique thing about Io, Europa, uh, Ganymede is they are. in orbital resonance that means when this ganymede completes one revolution around jupiter europa completes two io completes four so they have some specific kind of frequency is exactly perfectly matching always and that is resulting in tidal heating tidal forces that's the reason why these things although they don't have any heat source they get heated because of this tidal gravitational forces that's why it's happening now now we are looking today in callisto there is something unique about this also okay this i'll just quickly go into this yeah callisto now something unique about this callisto is that <clears throat> it is totally full of craters okay but there is no volcanic activity zero volcanic activity zero geological activity literally but it's full of craters that means impact craters so many meteors and all have impacted literally there is no place which is not free of such impact craters in this and this is uh, something that has always been there since 4 billion years there is no change it seems only these impact craters are there which were 4 billion years old still present as it is because there is no geological activity these things are remaining as it is so it's like the oldest surface in the solar system okay unlike other planets and all our, our earth where some geological activity keeps happening but the, there is no geological activity and some of the craters are really uh, you can say huge okay very large the biggest impact crater is this name valhalla the crater if you see across is 3000 kilometers as a single impact crater some some object supposed to have fallen on it it is 3000 kilometers long there are others also the second one is around uh, 1600 kilometers long uh, by you know size width so that's the speciality of callisto so you'll notice that jupiter's moons every moon having something unique about it okay and with that this jupiter's thing is done next uh, week we'll see something about saturn's moons now audio check i hope you enjoyed the jupiter's coverage of the moons audio check I've launched it now. Nine out of eleven replied. <clears throat> okay i got 100% 
11 out of 11 responded now let me share it everyone says audio is very good excellent so let me move on to the next item now now we are going to do review uh please ignore this probably i should change it right away escape this is 10 to 18 okay now we'll try to be fast in this so that we can spend more time in the birth chart analysis and the before that the astro ninja discussion okay so try to be fast in this let's do it like a rapid fire or uh, answer to be given verbally this one direction strength for mars is in 7th house or 10th house 10th house that's correct 10th house sun is exalted in aries or leo aries aries that's right mercury is debilitated in gemini or pisces 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 correct pisces second set 11 mars is exalted in aries or capricorn capricorn, capricorn. correct venus is exalted in cancer or pisces pisces pisces, pisces. pisces. correct jupiter is debilitated in capricorn or pisces Capricorn. That's right. Next set. Which is a comma house? Third or sixth? Sixth. Sixth. Sixth is wrong. Third. Third is correct. Which is an artha house? Tenth or fifth? Tenth. Sorry, tenth. Yeah, tenth should be the right answer. Which is a dharma house? Seventh or ninth? Ninth. Ninth. Okay, that's good. Next set: resourceful and philosophical. Capricorn or Aquarius? Aquarius. Mm, Apri- uh, Aquarius. Aquarius. Then workaholic and non-listener. Capricorn or Taurus? Taurus. Taurus. Taurus is right. perfectionist and healer scorpio or gemini scorpio scorpio that's correct next set fire sign born ascendant is a communicator or energetic 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 is right water sign born ascendant communicator or caring 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 is correct air sign born ascendant communicator or energy communicator energetic. very good now 15 represents competitors and enemies with sun or mars mars, oh. mars. correct seventh house is directional strength for venus or saturn ben saturn saturn that is wrong represents hips overweight jupiter or venus jupiter jupiter, jupiter. yes jupiter jupiter set 16 lagna for a bond teacher is answer 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 lagna for interrogative and idealist god or aquarius scorpio scorpio is correct Agna for slow and Pisces or Capricorn. 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 In Dig Bala for Saturn, seventh house, tenth house. Seventh house. That's right. Mars is exalted in Aries. True or false? Yes. True. True. Mars oh, so false. False. Sorry. No, it can't be true. False. <laughs> Where is it exalted? It's a Capricorn. Yep. Next, Venus is benefic or malefic? Benefic. 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 Benefic.
benefic benefic is right last set good memory is it leo or cancer cancer <clears throat> cancer is right lifelong worker is it virgo or capricorn virgo 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 materialist Taurus or Libra? Taurus. 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 Taurus is correct. That's the end of this. Very good. Good. Well done. Let's now move into this. I hope everyone has seen what I had shared in the group. We are going to discuss about this, where Saturn and Moon are together, how they might be influencing the persons, uh, because Moon represents mind. How this thing now works out. that's the discussion so first according to pinetopedia astro ninja has a hard time opening so he's indicating that saturn is doing obstruct or obstruct the way the mind works this person unable to open up uh, and express freely here according to saturnica astro ninja is a beautiful orderly mind saturn is about discipline order and all that so says he must be very more fluid in expressing uh, thoughts so more open so which one do you agree with and i will have to note down peanut opedia <clears throat> Was dairy is missing. Yeah. Okay. let me see participants okay first i'll hear which side you are in so starting with kavita ji which yeah, i'm just doing a guess work um he will have a beautiful orderly mind second one okay so beautiful orderly mind next ms usha venkatesan hello sir which one you are taking sir second one sir same ah yes sir orderly mind beautiful orderly mind third uh, next is ms vasudha first one hard time opening up hard time opening up okay swami or nimsha aaye and rest open in the page uh, can you please go on mute then uh, ms jayshri i think she is at work so i'll just pass it then oh now the order has changed okay ms padma balaji i okay, go for second Okay, second beautiful orderly mind. Yeah. Next, Mr. Ravi Manocha. Yeah, I also go with the second one. Second one, okay. Then, Ms. Rekha. Oh, I'm only guessing. It's the first one. Hard time opening up. Hard time opening up. Okay. then mr vasudev so vasudev you are on mute okay maybe he's not around mr so viresh babu i am going with second one second one okay
Next, Mr. Vishal Sharma. I'm going second. Second one. Uh, Mr. Vasudev, are you there? Okay, then his input is not there. Now, from those who are given, two people go for the first one. The person has hard time opening up. Second option, the remaining people say, except Mr. Vasudev and Jai Sri. So let's hear first um, the second option. What, what was the reasoning? Maybe one of you can, maybe I'll ask Ms. Kavita ji. Uh, because the moon is in exaltation. Exaltation, okay. Yeah. And um, um, uh, Saturn uh, is in uh, Venus house. So they are, uh, Saturn is in a friendly house. And uh, yeah. And uh, Saturn is in the eighth house. Uh, kind of, uh, it is. Uh, Maybe it's a Dustan house, I don't know. <laughs> These are the things I can tell. Mm. It is Dustana house, that's correct. So that's also yeah. identified. Dustana house. Yeah. Then uh, but uh, a, a transformation, divine gurus. If, if the Saturn is in eighth house, uh, as mm. per the PDF, it says uh, it's a divine gurus and things like that. So the mind has to be clear. That's my point. Mm. Okay. And the orderliness is because of Saturn. That's what you're saying, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is it uh, okay? Uh, let me hear if others have any other additional input before I ask some things. Any other inputs in addition to uh, what Kavita ji said? The ascendant is Libra. Uh, please repeat. The ascendant is Libra. And the weakness of Libra is argumentative. So he, 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 argumentative. He okay. The weakness of Libra is argumentative. So if, if one is able to open up, then he's only, he can be argumentative, otherwise not. Okay. Libra is argumentative. Fine. Thank you. Then any other input that helps us in some way for your choice? Moon is in very thick, right? Saturn, Saturn usually magnifies wherever it is. So I think it's in a positive way. Moon will open up. Moon and Saturn combination. Mm, okay, but moon has benefit only when it is increasing in, in the, the brightness. That is, uh, waxing moon is benefit, waning moon is not. In this case, can you identify, if, I think I have not covered, but do you know, are you aware that in this chart, is the moon waxing or waning? Not sure, but I think it's waning because it's at the end of the after seven, I think it's uh, position of uh, moon is after seven. seven okay, shows. waning is correct, but I'll explain that after this discussion. Okay, waning is correct, so it's not exactly benefic as per our theory. It's not in a benefic state, it's reducing in right going towards the sun because everything is clockwise here. Okay. Okay, fine. Just, just, just an additional input that moon is waning. Okay. But moon here is in Taurus. Hmm. So you know, moon in Taurus is good in. Moon in Taurus. What does it do? Or oh, something is happening here. One second. Moon in Taurus is fond of speech. Okay, moon in Taurus. Speech. That's another nice input. They are thoughtful in speech. Oh, it went off somewhere back. Okay. 
that's another good one moon in taurus on of speech yeah let me bring that also yeah any other input that helps here is there anything that's aspecting over here in some way any planet is aspecting that eighth house can you find mercury is aspecting seventh aspect yeah mercury is aspecting fine okay anything else yeah vengaji i said moon is in exaltation but the degree doesn't match because it's it says 15 and exaltation degree is 3 i think right mm. so, so moon, moon is not in exaltation yeah mm. okay Sa saturn in taurus also gives a disciplined uh, mind and patience yeah then is saturn nature is discipline that's fine okay that is good and there were two who chose the first one uh, miss vasudha and uh ms rekha so what was your uh, rationale behind this choice i look at it as saturn being uh, restrictive in nature so mm. uh if we look at uh, if we don't look at the sign just look at the house it's the second house of speech so mm. it's my assumption that if saturn is sitting there uh, wherever it sits it restricts so it kind of controls its emotional self and does not express fully but that's mm -hmm. my interpretation but if moon is sitting there i don't know if moon supports saturn or it also adapts because moon is a very impressionable planet so my assumption is that moon um is taken over by saturn's restriction and uh, finds it difficult to express that's my two cents okay saturn is malefic or benefic malefic malefic and okay uh any additional input from ms rekha anything additional are you on mute uh, that's from me i don't know if rekha ji wants to say something yeah that's what i was asking okay today also the minority the less number of people who opted for hard time opening up that is the correct answer okay here uh, what miss vasudha said is the right thing saturn has a constricting or restricting kind of nature and here with the moon it tries to block the mind okay and so this person will um will not open up like not in all situations uh saturn will kind of restrict that's the uh, interpretation for this okay so the highlight here is that saturn has a restrictive or or constrictive nature okay that that's what Uh, is to be understood here so it's not just about with moon with something else it will try to restrict or constrict 
okay that's the thing you might like to see other slides uh, later where saturn's interpretation is given to uh, extend this and see where it, it's restricting or restricting in what ways it's doing so please go through that and we can always discuss again on this okay so i hope this was a new learning right any questions hi i have a question is uh, saturn and rahu are almost near so moon and rahu combination is also the same moon rahu uh, has nature of bringing irritability in a person um especially when there is a full moon or a new moon okay that is the interpretation for moon and rahu together yeah Ir irritability or kind of ego hurting situations to come especially when there is a full moon or new moon okay. yeah Okay. Very interesting observation, Venkat. Thank you, and thanks for that question. I have Moon Rahu, and I often wonder why some days of the month I'm irritable. Irritable. Thank should, you for yeah. saying. Yeah, thank you. You can probably verify if that happens. Try to note the next full moon or new moons and see how things turn out. Sure, sure, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, then probably that will help you to take or take your uh, some actions which will help you for the for the better. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Thank you for this discussion. Let's move to looking at the birth chart. When can you said how to how to uh, find out whether the moon is uh, winning or waxing? Oh yeah, I forgot that. So uh, we'll go back here. So we have. Uh, I'll use this marker. when moon is exactly supposing moon was here when moon is exactly seven houses apart okay then moon somehow writing is not coming properly because of the bandwidth i think so i hope you can hear me anyway so moon when it is in seventh from the sun it is in full moon okay that's the brightest it has what it means is moon basically is very fast moving compared to other planets so it will keep rotating fast fast like this and when it is going towards the sun its brightness is reducing that means this is you know waning and when it is going away from the sun it is going towards full moon so it's waxing this is waxing towards the sun is waning that means if it is after the seventh place it is waning reducing brightness and moving away from sun that means house numbers from 1 to towards 7 will be increasing in brightness so it's waxing so it's and basically 7th from sun not from sun. the lagna no not about lagna just ignore this lagna in this case it's lagna yeah. okay so this moon is said to be benefic in the waxing phase brightness increasing brightness and when reducing brightness it said to be in waning phase and it is in a kind of malefic phase this is benefic phase that's how it is seen normally okay i have a question here uh, as you said that you know we have taken an inference that saturn uh, is a cause that it is a hard time opening up so is it that saturn in this particular house or you know and i have a sense saturn and moon combination but it is in 11th house so yeah i have seen yours also you have jupiter also there yeah i have a jupiter also there yes mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so, so there yeah it is again there for like in your case it be situational where you are around like with all knowledgeable people you will open up fully mm -hmm. otherwise you will be like you don't feel like opening up something like that is that true for you No, uh, yeah, that's true for me. That's yeah, so the, yeah. yeah the other part, which is even more uh, true from for me, is like it's not that you know if there are knowledgeable people, I open up. Mm. If I see that you know somebody is showing more knowledge than me, yeah. I just restrict opening up. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's basically yeah. yeah somebody 
you don't feel at the same level you don't feel like even opening up that's what it means yeah right okay so let's move to the birth chart reading that means we'll go back to i think we were doing some vivekananda's only right oh no we were doing uh, one one of our student batch mates i will have to open that uh, birth chart again one second huh? Oh, looks like the hard disk got disconnected. I'll try to open it on the web. and i had noted last time five people participated so the remaining get first preference today to participate in this birth chart reading let me open this yeah so first person to go can be ms padma balaji let me first get to this horoscope just bear with me some the speed is a bit slow I'll switch off my video temporarily so that the speed improves to get the birth chart. Okay. still opening Okay, I'll try to kill the browser and try again. Oh, it seems to have come up. Okay, now let's open this. So I'm sharing the screen now. I think you're seeing Suma Subramaniam's birth chart. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Okay. And we were doing uh, step seven was done, right? 
step eight in that birth chart steps for reading birth chart i had sent based on swami vivekananda's birth chart so uh, ms padma balaji if you can start from eight basic outward personality that means features of the ascendant lagna sign element findings quality findings polarity findings in this case what is the ascendant aries Yeah, yes. Aries is a fiery sign. Yes. It's a fiery sign, and it's in one. So it's a male or sign. So they are active, outgoing, and more reactive, uh, external focus, all those things. And they respond quick. They are energetic. Hmm. Mm. Quality is movable, fixed, or dual. quality quality is move move initiators initiators yeah now what does yeah. uh, aries sign what does it mean what what are the features they are go getters dynamic ambitious bold courageous fighter warrior adventurous forceful acts front line officer and they act first and think later yes mm. correct okay thank you very much next uh, mr vishal sharma if you can cover the point 9 in that steps pdf point 9 is about the sun self esteem sense of purpose soul so you need to tell about sun in this sign which is aries sun in this house not aries sorry in the sun in uh, this is uh, this one in taurus sun in taurus and sun is in second house here and you need to tell about other things related to sun whether it is exalted debilitated has directional strength what aspects friendship and all yeah Are you there, Mr. Vishal? I see a lot of people left. Two people left, I guess. Mr. Vishal is missing now. Let's move to then. Ah, uh, Ms. Rekha, can you cover that point nine? Actually, I don't have the related things. Right. For okay. Fortunately. Then we will pass it to Mr. Ravi. Do you have that? Uh, yeah, I can cover some bit of it. Not be completely. Uh, this yeah. Big side of his Uma. Uh, the sun. Sun in terms of the planet, it is uh, in Taurus. Yes. Yeah. So, just give me a second. In Taurus, those when the sun is present, hmm. yeah. So he'll be surrounded by the fragrance, the flower, garden, perfumes. He'll be aesthetic person. She'll be an aesthetic person in in the profession and home life. So generally organized, clean, as beautiful house, luxury and beauty oriented, fond of good food, delicious food, and lover of music. So, and then he will be, uh, she will be helpful to all the friends and relatives near and dear. So that's uh, something you know in terms of uh, the placement uh, in a particular planet. Yeah. Now it's also second house. So. second house represents what i'm a bit forgetting it <laughs> so uh, does anyone have no but i can yeah. just dhanasthana dhanasthana yes 
yeah dana stana that means liquid assets then what else does second house represent yeah someone can say yeah i will say the second mm -hmm. house represents liquid asset speech family food and nourishment so sun in second house means good financial capability capital accumulation and preservation authoritative and effective speech avail financial help from government or large organization okay uh, back to mr ravi so in yeah. terms of exaltation debilitation aspects what do we see in for this i am i am i am not on top of it so let okay. me go back and refer those then let me pass this to today very few people are there uh, mr veeresh babu can you say okay otherwise ms usha invitation no aspect sir as sun is it is it exalted or debilitated mm, oh sir no no and aspects also it's not there sir sun doesn't aspect anything what is it no 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 in you mean that uh, any any other planet is uh, aspecting that house sir, sir or sun is aspecting yeah both ways uh, no sir it is uh, sun is aspecting uh, scorpio yeah uh, jupiter also scorpio as well as uh, virgo yeah even in when cases where we don't see any planet we look at that that house is lord okay uh, that is uh, mars uh, then yes it is aspecting the mars's house mars house that's the way to see okay yes, yes. for now that much is sufficient what about friendship sun is with a friend and is it is there in a friend's house yes sir. both are friends sir sun and jupiter Hmm. Is it in a friend's house? Whose house is it? It is Venus. It is enemy's house. Both are in enemy's house. Yes, yes. Okay. Can we figure out something about the strength of the suns here in terms of its position? We had seen that gradation, right? How do we place sun in this case? Relation, uh, like debilitation is least strength. Then slowly you went okay, okay. It will be okay. If we can you say it will be in the lower side or the higher side in terms of strength. Okay, can someone else say? lower side just before the last just time. before the debilitation yeah that's the next is being in the enemy's house so it's so in this case but in particular is not from the uh, data so far we what we have seen sun is not really so strong okay now let me see the second one next is uh, this much enough for now for sun if you see the uh, that steps for chart analysis 10th we'll just cover one more and then stop today we can take the rest next class 10th is about the moon emotional response to life so let's maybe ask us usha you can continue on moon moon let me go back to that yeah so moon is in which sign it's in gemini which sign gemini and it is in which house third house 
third house okay if you have the content ready can you tell moon in gemini what does it mean and moon in third house or somebody else can say it yeah moon in gemini is a person with curly hairs bright intelligence highly literate ambassador good oratory skill beauty this is the humor yeah yeah witty and good sense of humor good sense of humor is it yeah. moon in third house sir i'll tell sir okay continue you cannot hear anything so far others are able to hear i can't hear anything any known any. for sir repeat again yeah please yeah. Uh, ambitious victorious true to conscience very long life expertise in various skills loves traveling known for virtuous deeds okay what does third house represent brother sister siblings then it represents aim uh, ambitious courage ambition mm. courage communication passion creation interest hobbies writings yeah. writing yeah mm. now what do we know about debilitation exaltation aspect friendships mercury is neutral sir it is in neutral house it is in neutral house ah. is it exalted or debilitated no sir no, it's not then mercury and moon doesn't matter because mercury is neutral uh, neutral okay is it in directional strength moon no, directional strength what is what is moon's digbala 7th 7th 4th house oh, no that's not 7th 4th yes 4th 4th okay. but here it's in third house yes or it's not what about aspects is anything aspecting moon or is moon aspecting anything no no sir yeah there is no uh, existing planet there but it's aspecting which house it is aspecting mercury again virgo no not mercury jupiter sagittarius you have to check from moon's position 7th 7th is 7th is uh, sagittarius yes sagittarius who is the lord jupiter Hmm. Are Jupiter and Moon are they friends or enemies? Friends. Friends. Jupiter and Moon are friends. Okay. Fine. I think that was good. We will need at least one more class to finish with this practice, and I hope this time I should be able to. give you a better way to instead of having so many slides you have to go through you know, i'll give a condensed form and i think i can share one excel file which has all of these okay listed so it will be easier for you as a single source to refer all of these things information which are given in the slides let's go back to the powerpoint this is done feedback Yeah, yeah. So I've launched this now.
seven out of eight responded. Okay. Let me stop here. I'm sharing the results. So meeting pace is fine. Says so seven out of seven hundred percent. I feel I learned something today. Seven out of seven. The practicality was engaging. Seven out of seven. Topics. One person says all were hard. Two says all easy. Four say partially hard and the rest easy. Audio is very good for all of 100 percent seven by seven. Now, thanks for this input. Let's go to self-reflection. What did we learn today? Some responses, please. One more person left. What did we learn today? Astrology, Sanskrit alphabets. Yep. Related to astrology, zodiac sciences. Yes. And we saw Jupiter's moon. That is strong. Yeah. What was the name of that Jupiter's moon? Callisto. Callisto, yes. Then. Revision of fundamental questions. Okay. Review of all those fundamental set. Saturn and moon combination. Saturn moon combination. Very good. Then. Reading of Uma, Ms. Uma Subramaniam's birth chart. Yep. Yes. And uh, so with this, and I think I will, I'm going to soon share, maybe by tomorrow or day after, one Excel file which will have whatever information in slide is, is will be there in Excel file. So please start using that and similarly go with the steps for as many charts as you can. Now let's go to second. One thing you wonder, anything that you wonder or curious about. Anything to wonder? Combination of planets, how they work on an individual. Combination of planets for? In each house, how they um, how they reflect a person's view. Okay. Good. Any other? Raining and waxing of moon, the degree. Okay. Then? So I, I wonder about, uh, you know, how do you, when there are two, two different aspects, like when we saw sun, Saturn is there and moon is there, mm -hmm. moon should we consider more? Because moon has different qualities. We saw that moon has a quality of a speech. But then, you know, we went because being Saturn there, mm -hmm. you know, giving malefic, and then we have tilted towards Saturn. So how do somebody get that wisdom to, to know that, you know, whether he has to choose A or he has to choose B? So that's something, you know, which... Yeah, so over a period of time. So partially we'll see that, uh, okay, we can look at it logically. The rest is statistical. So the finding from Dr. Bala is that in this case, the mind is blocked. Okay, or oh, difficulty in opening up. So that's more of a statistical finding. And uh, the more we refer charge, the more, and also we should not just ourselves, we should not accept it as it is. We have to also see whether it is really true. If it is not true, then we we'll have to add it to our uh, uh, things that we need to find or we need to buy, find out from that person. So uh, we also kind of need to add on to that uh, uh, verifying against the statistics and you know trying to get more information, which probably was missing. So it's, it may not be always black and white, but as we do more and more birth chart readings, then 
we will begin to find some meaning behind these okay so you may say that you know we have to clinically prove it and mm -hmm. we have to keep or maybe correlate it mm -hmm. so yeah this is something but we have to correlate at times yeah, yeah. it is evidence based what the findings in these slides or like what i told about saturn and moon but uh, we should also try to explore more and uh, if we are if we are finding repeatedly that saturn moon is not really find we are not finding anything opening up then there is something missing there or we need to go back to dr bala and find out what's happening yeah okay so it's somewhere in always in between so that's all we are also like kind of uh, we should consider ourselves as you know analysts so we are also adding to the data that's being given to us or we are trying to substantiate or we are trying to find some new information so that's how we are we are something is like fixed as such yeah that that's i hope that perspective is clear yeah that's clear yeah, yeah. that's good thanks for bringing that point now third one in one class to describe today's class very engaging sir good any other thought provoking thought provoking that's nice one more interesting great and so the next class we will save some time because today we had a lot of revision of that uh, fundamental set next class will be uh slightly you know covering the other content which is beyond just the basics so that will be the we'll i'll call it intermediate set so again we'll have only three questions and i think we should be able to finish that bar chart ready and also we'll have the next uh astro ninja question okay and now with this we conclude if you have any questions we can discuss yeah, other yeah, i have a question uh, today in the birth chart we saw saturn uh, and uh, uh, saturn and what was that what moon moon yeah so they were they, uh, they were in um, um, venus house yeah so this combination if it is in some other some other house uh, will it be the same mind block or it will be different because here we didn't cut, cut, uh, take in consideration of the yeah, house in be, which they both are yeah? yeah of course there will be some variations like for example we discussed uh, mr ravi's also he had jupiter as well so the that there will be some some variations in that but the uh, main thing is we just need to keep in mind saturn and moon so with the you know conditions that is not always like exactly mind block it could there could be some other flavor to it so that's how we have to see yeah. what is the impact of moon with ketu hmm? moon with ketu yeah you can try to try to see uh, what it could be what do you think it could be if we are detached person because ketu uh, is there yeah that is what it's going to be like least detached uh, kind of um outlook Maybe emotion emotionally detached yeah emotionally detached correct i am wondering where, where is the remedy works you know you know you see that you are aware now that these are the areas mm. you know which will come under some kind of an influence by position of a planet and a planet so where does remedy comes in between when we when we talk about uh, mm. uh, you know in a colloquial way when we we see our rituals we see we go back to mm. fundamentals and basics in terms of the rituals and uh, you know puja dharma etc so yeah. how does they you know come and play a role when it comes to setting these things maybe right or i i won't say right maybe setting these things in a manner that doesn't impact um yeah there are there are many things in this uh, i mean it's a very broad question the thing is 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल सम समी माइट से इफ योर सन इज वीक यू रीड आदित्य हृदय मंत्रा एंड सो दीज थिंग्स दोज हु नो अबाउट दोज हुव यूज इट दोज हुव यू नो सीन द इफेक्ट ऑफ लाइक चैंटिंग दैट मंत्रा देन इट इज बिकॉज दीज थिंग्स आर कनेक्टेड लाइक दिज मंत्रास द वे आवर माइंड वर्कस and uh its effect on our experience and the, the orientation so these things um each kind of thing has a specific uh, like you can call it remedy uh it depends exactly case to case and uh, so like mantra is one kind of remedy the other could be like wearing the your some stone Uh, or you have even vastu related so there can be uh, various kinds of remedies uh, or could be like uh, putting more effort or uh, sometimes dr bala says like if you have rahu in 12th you will be a late uh, riser so you, you should get up consciously get up uh, early do things um by your own effort so free will free will is another option for remedy so there are various ways and each will have a different but the thing is uh, we should have the knowledge of which uh, has been proved or has evidence of giving the right kind of effect but that also means the reading should be of the chart should be uh, as a as close to accuracy as possible yeah all right there is no straight forward answer as such but okay. uh, there are yeah different ways to yeah, the question only is that as you rightly said the question was uh, you know whether it works so as you said yeah. that for mm. it, has, it has worked so yeah. it, it's again you know correlated exactly so analyzing that whether it works or not for somebody yeah. first is accuracy in the data your birth time then accuracy reading it properly reading the chart properly and then knowing the method which really works or the person himself if the doesn't have uh, uh you know if somebody want to ask them to tell a mantra he doesn't know any sanskrit so, so there are various things involved here uh mm-hmm. that to really be sure which will work or sometimes it could be just a trial and error so you'll have to try things out and see which works okay, okay. yeah yeah okay yeah thanks for bringing that any other questions <clears throat> okay so thank you very much for joining today we'll see you next week again thank you sir good night thank you have a good weekend yeah thank you thank you